Today the batteries just arrived at Flow Hydraulic and Cam Loops. Um, this is my first time seeing them. Eric saw them uh, at the actual manufacturing facility, but it's my first time. Yep. He literally flew all the way over there. Have a look at these batteries. And high speed train too, that's pretty cool. These are them. Yeah, so this is one of the modules. We got eight of them in total. And um, four of them we're gonna take home today. And then four of them are actually gonna ship all the way out to Flowdraulics in Toronto so they can configure the BMS, which is the battery management system. That is a good solid case. Eh? Yeah, well, that's the whole point why I got them like that, right? So they're tough. Those are going over to join the E-axles for testing. Exactly. So that's, uh, what can you tell us about these batteries, Eric? Yeah, so they're lithium iron phosphate. Uh, they got good discharge ratings. And these are mass produced in China like this already, meaning that we're using a really standard product. Um, what I like about it too is all the mounting harness is at the bottom already pre-built. So it kind of takes the headache away from us to build a really cool like enclosure. It's a pre-made enclosure. It's also got a really cool designed heat pad underneath so you could heat the batteries electronically versus that glycol crap. So I mean it still has coolant. But. Yeah, it has coolant, but that's for cooling and not for heating. So we don't have a very sophisticated heating system. So you have two types of cables here for the communication. This one's the BMS. So this one essentially communicates with every single cell and individual cell configurations inside the battery. So yeah, this is kind of the brains of the system. Uh, this one, it's kind of neat. This one we designed, it's to make sure that we have a heat pad at the bottom during the winter time. It gets really cold in Canada. So uh, this actually just supplies the communication and some power to these really large carbon fiber heat pads underneath the uh, batteries. So we have a cable for each battery and that gets essentially the power to it when it needs to be heated. Uh, just make sure we don't freeze these things. They're pretty darn expensive. Yeah, but that's as simple as it is, right? Four cables for the BMS and then two cables for the heat. That's it. So it should make my life pretty easy. So yeah. What's it's amazing it? it all fits in this one little box. So What's that black box there? Uh, so that is the uh, BMS module. So instead of having like an individual BMS on each battery, we decided to have all the brains in one place. And that just communicates to a smaller microprocessor on every battery. It's a space saving thing. And that means that this one does all the calculations on how every cell is doing. And there's quite a few cells, there's thousands of cells on these batteries on this truck. So we gotta make sure that this computer is in a safe place tucked away, not exposed to heat, and uh, it'll do all the heavy lifting in terms of how we're discharging the batteries, how we're charging the batteries, um, and making sure that the battery is always in good health. So, really happy that it actually came in this small package. They make these things as, as big as you want them. We kind of asked them to compress it as much as possible. And uh, yeah, I think it's only, yeah, it's only about uh, 20 inches wide. So. What does BMS stand for? Battery Management System. And uh, it's really important to have a BMS when you use lithium ion batteries, because they're kind of like, TNT without it, right? It's an explosive technically, but if you have the computer control, every single cell in a battery um, is going to be recorded in real time and controlled. So it never has runaway thermal activity, right? You're always making sure the battery is at a solid temperature, right, within that band that you want it, and also at a voltage that's not going to go above or below a voltage. So you don't, you know, destroy your batteries either from over discharging it or under discharging them, right? So, um, so yeah. So BMS is really important in any electric vehicle. And yeah, this is our, our first shot at this one. Um, I've built smaller BMSs in the past, but I've never built a big battery like this before. This is the biggest battery I've ever built by a factor of 10. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed with what we could build. What are we gonna do about the, you, you mentioned that there is now gonna be a pad under the battery keeping them warm during the cold months. Yeah. And yeah. is that gonna be like running 24-7 overnight yeah, or? It could. Yeah, it could easily run 24-7. If it's like minus 40 degrees, it might run all the time. But it might actually just pulse too, right? So it'll pulse energy when it gets too cold. And that's what we want, right? We want to make sure that it is efficient. We're not just like using energy for nothing because it actually might cause damage to the batteries. So that's why you have a BMS because you can calculate the average cell temperature for that one pack and then send energy to it for heating when it needs it. So overnight, when you're not using the truck, the BMS is gonna be monitoring the batteries and keeping them at ideal temperature 
for longevity and use. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it was super important for us to figure out like if you're going to keep this truck plugged in at night, even even if it is outside, um, the heat required to keep the batteries warm is never more than what our typical charger will be able to deliver. And a typical charger we're going to recommend to clients is going to be about a six kilowatt charger, which is level two charging, very cheap to install. Um, and that will be like more than the power that you need to heat all the batteries. Maximum heating is going to be roughly about two kilowatts of energy, which I think is quite, we should be pretty happy that it's a great achievement of us to be able to do that. And that's because we're using carbon fiber filament at the bottom. So very, very energy efficient there. Um, I just can't wait to turn this thing on and be able to test it because yeah, we'll make sure that everything works before the show. So we got four to take home now to hook up to our truck, yeah. and four are going for testing. Yeah, yeah. If we if we bring them home today, we'll actually start mounting them, right? So we can make sure they fit within the frame that we have good suspension for them too, and then I can start getting my mind around how we're going to wire them into place. Um, it's nice that we're going to have four as well because that means that we're also installing the actual battery voltage that we need to operate. So I can actually start wiring everything in. And then the other four are going to go to Flowdraulic in Toronto because they have another axle as well as the computer called the VCU, our vehicle control unit. They'll be able to connect their vehicle control unit um, onto our batteries in the shop. And then they'll actually have a throttle pedal too. And they'll actually be able to turn the axles in their shop, making sure that everything works before it gets shipped to us. So, yeah, pretty awesome they're helping us out in that way. These are the big thick ports that Chase was worried about, right? So we have you know, a big DC to DC bus, um, and essentially this distributes all the power out. All right, the batteries got here, nothing was damaged. We opened it up, had a couple of looks, and so now we're just gonna load them onto the trailer, bring them over to our shop, and then we're gonna start fabricating up battery mounts. It's an exciting moment. This is one of like the last, other than the power distribution box, this is the last major component we need. People say batteries are heavy, but we only need a 40 ton crane to load these batteries up. We don't even need an 80 ton. Okay, I wanted to go over how to do up these little ratchet straps because I see a lot of people doing them a little goofy when I look at things on the highway and there are a million different ways to do it, but this is my way. What I like to do, take this strap, rotate it around till it's right there. So basically you feed it through, it's closed, come in through the top side, out the bottom, so it's on the bottom, grab your hook, under the rub rail, in, in. Grab this end, we're tucking this tail. I just fold it up a couple times, and then like a trucker, you just stick her under the load in there like that. Then when you go to tighten this, it holds your strap end down. A lot of people tie it up around here, do a bunch of loops and fancy things, and I kind of suck at knots. And if you're like me and you suck at knots, that's the easiest way to do it. Because then, when you want to loosen this, all you do is pull that. You don't have to untie any knots, undo anything, it's just right there. Plus, if you're driving and this comes loose, it gives you a visual indicator that your straps are loose as it's flapping. Whereas it's tied up, it doesn't do that. So there's a pro and con on that. On one side, it's not flapping into anything. On the other side, you can see it. Which is also why whenever I throw these, I'm always on the passenger side. I do all my straps, even on my uh, high boy low bed, I weld all my cinches onto the passenger side because if you ever have anything come loose and you're out driving and you're on the side of the road, if it's on the driver's side, you have to stand out in traffic and you watch cars go by you as you're tucked on the side of the trailer. You put it on the passenger side, 
you stand on the ditch side, traffic's on that side, you're out of the way safe, you have all the room in the world to work. Another part of having it tucked in like this is now it is acting as a rub guard. So it's gonna stop, your, it's gonna protect your main strap from the corners of whatever your load is. Rather than grabbing it and then tying it around the handle and tying it around, now when you stop, cause you, you know, you want to stop and check this as you go, it's easy to walk down the side, grab them all, Give them a couple ratchets and just check them. If you've got them all tied up around the handle, it's a pain in the cunt to try and change them all. <laughs> you don't want to say that. It's a pain in the ass to try and change them all. <laughs> you know, you probably put that one up there and just do a, it's a pain in the <laughs> and then go back. A pain in the ass. A pain in the butt to try and change it all. Okay, we wanted to thank everyone who's been supporting us on this. Uh, people that have bought a round of beer for the boys, coffee in the morning, supported our YouTube through the merch store. These are those ones that have really just donated to help the cause. We want to thank them out. First off, we got Alan Corral out of Vancouver. He's stopped by, uh, actually in person, and bought us all a round of beers. So thanks, Alan. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, yeah, pass her over. So uh, another big thank to Steve Butte from uh, Huntsville, uh, Minneapolis. I, I think Michigan. Nope. Michigan, my apologies. All right. Want to read one no, this is one of the best parts is just trying yeah, to figure yeah. out which uh, yeah. state they're from. All right, then we got. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Eric Vandelite out of Eaglesham, Alberta. What a delightful name! That's a good name. Oh god! Uh, Terry Turner from Delta, BC. Cheers, buddy. Terry Turner's an Terry Turner. one. Yeah, I know. Thank God, huh? Garrett Boyle from Scottsdale, Arizona, bought nice. us two rounds of beers. Oh, <laughs> thanks, thank you. Garrett. Beauty. Scottsdale. All right, and uh, we want to thank Andrew Vanderverder. Uh, no, it's, yeah, Vanderverder uh, from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Nice. Thanks, bud. We got Spencer Noble from Toronto, Ontario. Yeah. Oh, nice, Toronto. Toronto. Uh, ben Schmidt from Two Hills, Alberta. Thanks, Ben. Alberta. Basically proving that we can't read at Edison Motors. Oh, Austin Linderman. <laughs> Austin oh, bought hey, us around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Austin's actually came to the shop and helped us design that cap. So thanks, Austin. Hell yeah. I love it when people stop by and help out. Yeah, Those are guy, the best. <laughs> like this board. Yeah, no doubt. Okay, and Christopher Campy, really appreciate it. You're from Shelby, um, North Carolina. <laughs> All right, we got Matthew Elliott from Le bon, British Columbia. Lone yeah. Double beers for the boys. Wow, oh, thanks, BC Matt. boy. That's Lone know, yeah. Butte, and Matthew is a director of Edison Motors. Yeah, he's actually the one that yeah. came with me up to Alaska to go check out them trucks at Red Dog. Nice. Video Hugh, coming out soon. Maybe. Hugh Norman of Dry Creek, Saskatchewan. Beers for the boys and coffee for the crew. Thanks, buddy. We appreciate it. Oh, thanks, Hugh. We appreciate it. Coffee we got important. Jed Hale out of Wellington, UT. UT. Utah. 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 Wellington, Utah. Ooh, right on. Good scenery. Okay, yeah, so this is a really big appreciation for the coffee uh, from Taylor Smith. He's from Louisville, Tennessee. Nice. Yeah. Louisville. Louisville, my apologies. We got Robert Farnworth from Bellevue, Washington. Right on. Ooh. Thank you, sir. Washington. Uh, okay. Kevin Farley from Toronto, Ontario. Nice. <laughs> Two right from on. Toronto. Toronto. Thanks, buddy. Uh, we got Steve Butte. Ah, thanks, Steve. Last, uh, last lot least. Yeah, and uh, last but not least, uh, Derek Dr uh, Drager. Drager. Yeah, Drager. Drager. Yeah, yeah. From uh, Cleardale, Alberta. Hey, yeah. Really appreciate Hey guys, we it. wanted to thank everybody on the YouTube. It's been helping out this journey, <laughs> helping share us, helping support us to get these trucks built. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. Cannot say that enough. Uh, stay tuned. Hell yeah. And if any of you want to know how you can also donate the beers and the coffee and the YouTube, there are options on our merch store for to purchase that. And we appreciate everyone and you'll have your names written out and you guys are great. Love you guys. Yeah, thanks so much everybody.